let's get into it coach calling news and i can't say i'm so surprised by what i'm about to show you guys but apparently one of those uh ladies of the internet let's call them those of girls she came forward after being black pilled i'm not a part of I'm, I'm a grown man so i don't use the red pill black pill blue pill gold i don't know what any of that means but i will say it seems like she awakened to the fact that she needed to stop making what she calls political propaganda for the Biden administration. And she came forward about it in an interview that she did. Check this out. So this is her right here. She, uh, her name's uh, Farah, Farah Khalidi. <laughs> anyway, Farah Khalidi, she was making uh, posts for the Biden administration, apparently. So this has come up on a few uh, new sites. I found the clip here where she's talking about it. And honestly, not so surprised. But listen to her uh, recounting it really quick. I lucked out and then, you know, TikTok was basically full time for me. The guy was taking ads. I lucked out and then, you know, TikTok was basically full time for me. The guy was taking ads by the time I graduated college from like the Biden administration and Planned Parenthood and like dating apps and stuff. So it was uh, like fully financially, you know, sustainable. So you were getting the Biden administration was buying ads from you? Yeah, I was doing full on political propaganda. And they would just, they, oh, really? With like what kind of like Biden created? 10 million jobs yeah, this year. It, yeah, honestly. And it, the funny thing is they're like, do not disclose this is an ad because, you know, they're like, technically it's not a product, so you don't have to disclose it's uh -huh. an ad because I think they just wanted like some edgy girl of color to just tell people like when when they nominated like Katanji Brown Jackson, they're like, oh, can wow. you say like as a person of color, you know, that you feel reflected and it's like a white woman emailing this to me and yeah. she's like giving me this script and I'm like, no. And she's like, please. And I'm like, no, I'll say, I'll like talk about the news of it, but I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to have a white person tell me to be like, you know, this is how I feel as a person of color. Like, it's just so, I think that black filled so me. I lucked out and then, you know, TikTok was basically full time for me. And the guy was taking <laughs> for pl yo really really surprised really quick because i i didn't uh, i didn't hear that at first but planned parenthood as well that is devious very very devious now you know what that's the thing you know i'm thankful for it in this case but of girls girls like that will just say they can't be trusted to keep their mouth shut <laughs> you should know that you should know that they should know that in the biden administration these girls aren't gonna keep these girls are gonna get their money they're gonna be like i never said it was an ad i put that information out there and now i'm gonna talk about it on a podcast you never said i couldn't talk about it on a podcast of course that's what she's gonna do which is great i'm but again not surprised in the least by this information because this happens all the time there's actually somebody, his name's Harry, Harry Sisson, I believe. His name's Harry Sisson. He is a, uh, he's not even on here. Let me, let me make sure to tag him really quick. Oh, that's for another episode. Ooh, ho, 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 that's for another episode. Oh, man. Actually, let me go back to that really quick. Just save that real quick. But let me show you who this Harry gentleman is. Let's go here. Harry, Harry Sissy should pop up right away styles there he is right here so this gentleman re re really rare you see someone who's on tiktok first of all he has the white house background in his profile picture okay like just, that should tell you enough right there but he's 21 and he is a self-proclaimed democrat 800,000 on tiktok for inquiries this is who you message when he says email inquiries at harry sissons harry j sissons.net when it says something like that that tells you that that's business so that was like i knew right away just from working in the comedy industry entertainment you know film and television i saw that right away and i was like oh that's that doesn't go to him that goes to like an agency you know so i knew that right away but people started doing digging because he actually made a post and the post got community noted and what came up on the community notes was it was saying this person is actually paid by the DNC and it had an article attaching to it. And everybody jumped all over that. And his people at Pallet, Pallet Management, they jumped all over it. They, they fought to get that note taken down because people aren't supposed to know. And uh, apparently somebody did some research. I'll show you that right now. They did a Freedom of Information Act because even though Harry is just a public figure of sorts, when he's having dealings with people in the government, 
that makes him subject to a Freedom of Information Act, which means that somebody can request, I need to see the text messages between this person and Harry Sisson, and they have to give it to you. You better know your rights. So there's a little video talking about just that. So I'm really happy for Harry that he got to do an interview with the governor of Pennsylvania. But Harry, were you aware that all of your text messages, emails, and other communications with government officials is part of the public record and therefore subject to a Freedom of Information request? But don't worry, Harry, I haven't submitted any of those requests. However, your favorite investigative journalist did. I just want to be clear real quick that none of this is my research, and all credit goes to Sarah is censored. That's her on X, and you can also follow her on TikTok at Sarah for Texas. So Harry's been posting videos like this, where he says, I asked Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania how he'll respond if Trump tries to overturn the election results. You know, basically pretending that that was a question he wanted to ask. However, the text messages that Sarah was able to get tell a different story. Hold up. Wait a minute. See, this is Harry's conversation with Gavin Lichtenstein. Gavin is the director of digital partnerships for the governor. And what's Gavin saying here? Hey, Harry, it's Gavin with Governor Shapiro's team. Excited for tomorrow. I'm working on getting you an embargoed version of the script with bullet points so you can prepare. And it's funny because if I had been interviewing a government official and he sent me a text that said he was going to give me a script, I would question why I need one. But Harry's response is cool. Thanks. I'll give him credit because he did ask if it would be possible to ask some questions about our democracy. But if you actually watch the interview, which I have to say, sadly, I did for the sake of being able to make this video. Yeah, he never asked any of those questions. No, Harry stayed on script. And the funny thing is that Harry has denied that this has been set up by pallet management. He's tried to deny that he's been compensated to do this interview. But we know that's not true. This was all set up courtesy of Kevin Pham, who is Harry's talent manager at Pallet. And Sarah, being the outstanding investigative journalist she is, actually tried to clarify this with Harry. Asked him, did pallet management handle your interview with Josh Shapiro? Was there a financial transaction between the two? Oh, and Harry saw the message. Gotta love read receipts. So thanks to Sarah, we now know that his entire interview with the governor was scripted. And it was scripted by the governor's team with bullet points. And we also know that it was set up by pallet management. Good job, Kevin. I've never known a talent agency to work for free. There was obviously financial compensation for this interview, but none of his videos about this point out that it's a paid partnership. Harry, do you know what they call doing paid political advertisements for a candidate and not disclosing that you're paid for it? Hey, little buddy, that's a crime. But hey, I guess liberal creators can commit crimes on this platform and not be punished by TikTok. So I'm real. It's very interesting. So pallet management, there actually, there was, it's been, it's getting, getting scrubbed quite a bit, but I made a video, it's on my main channel, and it's about Joe Rogan and Tim Dillon talking about this Harry Sisson character because Tim Dillon actually interviewed him. So what people ended up finding were receipts. They found how much the DNC actually paid Harry and one he has a friend that he does his TikToks with, a gentleman named Chris. So how much they were paid. So within a year span or two year span, they were paid about $310,000, which is remarkable. Wow for such a young person. Good for you, son. Um, <laughs> you're doing it for a bad cause, but you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's nice to have that kind of money, but yeah. So he, he's been found out to do that. So I'm not, I'm not surprised at all when I hear that this lady was doing the exact same thing. It's, uh, it's wild. So you got to really, you got to really know that as you're watching these people, some people you'll see and you're like, how does this person love Biden so much? And why are they pushing so hard? Things are happening behind the scenes that you wouldn't actually know about. And in this case, in this woman's case, she was getting paid. In Harry's case, it's been said and proven via community notes and all sorts of people fact checking and looking into it that he would have gotten paid. And what this gentleman said makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Still sick a little bit. What this gentleman said makes perfect sense. Talent agencies aren't going to do this for free. Okay, and if you are a part of a talent agency, you're not going to be able to break away and just do your own interview because then the talent agency is going to be like, we're the ones who get you the gigs. So now you just went and got your own gig. So you just kind of cost us money. We're representing you. And now you're going out and just getting your own interview with the governor. This guy's also sat down with um, one of Biden's uh, one of Biden's teams. Um, Blinken, I believe his name is. I think he's even sat down with Biden. So when you see stuff like that, you're like, how do these young people get these interviews? And, you know, they make it seem like, well, you know, Biden really cares about young people and those Gen Z types. And that's how they connected because he really cares. But in reality, 
It's just a talent agency connecting this this TikTok influencer to the White House. And then they're just saying, OK, here's your script. Ask these questions. We're trying to right now. What we're trying to do is appeal to Gen Z and you're going to help us do that. Boom. Done. Man. Would I do that for Trump? I don't I don't I don't think I would have to be paid <laughs> if I like he wants to have a, a rally at Madison Square Garden. I'm going to be there. And if I got an interview with them, I would just be like, I'm just, this is amazing just to interview you. Are you kidding me? If they were like, we, could we pay you? I'd be like, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'll be fine. I'll be fine, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's interesting to see. And also Trump doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to do it. Like it or like him or hate him. He doesn't have to do that. He's a master marketer without having to reach in, uh, to anybody like that. Biden, on the other hand, seemingly is reaching out to OF girls <laughs> and uh, young people like Mr. Harry Sisson here. Very, and look at this. His backdrop is Biden. Who's ba who in their right mind? Even somebody who's so far left. Why would they have their backdrop be Biden? Now, you know, I'm not saying anything bad. It's a nice picture. A little Colgate smile there. I, I get it. But why on earth would you be doing that? You know what I mean? Why on earth would the first thing in your profile be 21 Democrat? What? It, it doesn't even read properly. It's like it was like made by the Matrix. It's so odd. Then 800,000 on TikTok. Good on you. But then again, right away, when I saw this email, I was like, oh, that's a business thing. Because believe you me, like, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm someone who's not connected to anything. And you go see my email. It's just a Gmail because I don't know anything about doing business and setting things up and sponsors. I don't know anything about that. I don't know how to do that whatsoever. So I'm just a regular person. And you can see it when you when you actually email me and I email back and this and that. So <sighs> I'm not surprised. Not surprised. Biden is trying anything. And these guys have been getting paid by Biden for, I think, since 2021, I think. Pretty sure. So very, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. But be sure, stay on alert when you see things like this. The next time you see some woman of color being like, Joseph R. Biden and his his press secretary have just impressed me so much. Next time you see something like that, I wouldn't believe it. I would just say staged. Just comment staged. How much did you get paid? And you know what? That's something that I've said quite a bit. Anytime I see someone going so hard in regards to like attacking Trump or, you know, when they're, they're getting so, so overly excited about Biden or or they're just trying to do this mental gymnastics to talk about how great he is. Like like when Bill Maher said that Biden had less dementia than Trump, but then had no examples at all. He had like a half of one and then that was it. Then the person's like, but what about all of and he was like. Ah, uh, whatever. That doesn't matter. And you're like, what? Like, you're not even you're, but you're supposed to be a smart guy. Whenever I see that, I always think to to myself, we should be able to see this person's bank account. Like, they're famous. I want to see your bank account after before you set, made this statement. You know, De Niro. Oh, that guy. That guy. That guy. Hey, hey, you talking to me? Hey, that guy. Huh, he's gonna do away with your show. I never liked him. He's oh, I never liked him at all. Whenever you I want I want to see your bank account. What happened there? I want to see what happened. Was there any payments given to you? It seems like it, man. I, I wish. I wish, but I'm not an authoritarian, okay? I don't want to send the brown shirts in. Okay? I'm not gonna do that to people. But I really want to see. I'd really like to know who's getting paid and who's not. I would just I would love that so much. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, share, and let me know if you're surprised. I sure am not. Anyways, I'm out.